All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26th, 1985, 118 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Einie. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right, Jack Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. You got that thing hooked up to the... car? Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. This baby hits 88 miles per hour. You're gonna see some serious shit. Watch this, watch this. <laughs> what did I tell you? 88 miles per hour! The temporal displacement occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Ah, Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ, Doc! You disintegrated Einstein! Calm down, Marty! I didn't disintegrate anything! The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact! Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler! I sent him into the future! One minute into the future, to be exact, and at precisely 1.21 a.m. in zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flush dispersal. Look out! Uh, Doc? Huh, oh, that's peculiar. Uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, w what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuit. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Notebook. Notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I've detailed the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's... Mass equals high times Z, and E equals a... Doc, uh, something's way off here. Uh, Doc? Great Scott! Doc, what is it? I've made a horrible mistake. Doc! Doc, no! I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Doc! Marty? Is everything okay?
Yeah, Mom, I... It was, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late! Are we too late to stop the... sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to... Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell-bent on using his land for that new parking garage, and... Hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. But at least things can't get any worse. Hey, Marty! Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... remembering. I miss Einstein. Doc built this model of downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Come on, I saw it first. Yeah, I guess you're right. But I picked it up first. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Brown's to... Brown's worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. <laughs> Hey, let me try, Marty. Now, Biff, let Marty have his turn. Uh, you got it, Mr. McFly. Hey, Dad. Who's running this sale, anyway? Oh, that'd be me, son. You? Why? Well, once it became apparent that the bank was going through with the sale, I volunteered to oversee it in order to make sure that Doc's stuff would be treated with a modicum of respect. Isn't that right, Biff? You got it, Mr. McFly! 
I'm telling you, this sale is a joke. Doc's only been gone for a few months, and I happen to know... Yes, you've told us he's not dead. He's on a trip. Let's say you're right. Have you considered that this trip may not have been entirely voluntary? I hate to say it, but Doc's run up some pretty sizable debts around town. Maybe he's just hiding from his creditors. You got Doc wrong. Sure, maybe he's not so good with money. That's just because his mind's always on bigger things. But he's still a straight-up guy. He'd never run away from his problems. Well, you know him better than I do, son. But the bank is within its rights to sell off his stuff. Maybe you should try to find some things to remember him by before Biff grabs them all. About Biff, Dad, I, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son. I'll stay out of your way. But you know where to find me. Do you think dreams can predict the future? Well, you know I don't go in for that mystical stuff. But I do think they can reflect how you're feeling about the future. That notebook is Doc's legacy. I've got an obligation to protect it. Now, hold on a minute. Didn't you just get done telling me Doc's still around? Off traveling somewhere? Yeah. Then how is it your obligation to protect his legacy? You can't have it both ways, Marty. If Doc's alive, he can protect his own legacy. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Hey, Dad. Wh why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Let's make some noise. It took me forever to repair this thing after I blew it out last time, and now some jerk's gonna pick it up for pennies. I better not crank it up anymore. I really don't want to blow this thing out again. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. A one, two, three. <laughs> hey, look! It's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. Rock on, Biff. Oh, shit. Uh, Doc, where are you? Doc? Einstein! Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you?
Okay, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Recording that the DeLorean's automatic retrieval feature is a resounding success. Automatic retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I program the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I can land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, you've come to my rescue in the past. Or oh, was it the future? Anyway, I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Aren't you gonna tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading marked Last Time Departed. Good luck. Right, right, Last Time Departed, Last Time Departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on, come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? What do you know about this shoe, Einie? Great Scott! I think he's onto something! Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to Doc, Einie? Starbase Zero. I hope Jimmy's fixed the wild... Step away from the door! Ah. Now, let me get a look at you. Einstein, come on! Just as I suspected. Hooligans! Get along now! Scat! I'm not a hooligan, ma'am. I'm a, a teenager. I wasn't born yesterday, young man. Aren't you the miscreant who skateboards through the town square every morning between 8 and 8.30 in a decidedly unpunctual manner? Uh, yeah? All skateboarders are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. State your business, child! You're making me miss Merv! Well, see, that's the thing. I'm not sure why I'm here. Einstein here brought me, and... Well? E. Strickland? You aren't related to, uh, Vice Principal Strickland, are you, ma'am? Not that it's any of your business, but I'm his sister, Edna. Oh, and you're one of those McFly slackers, aren't you? Yes, uh, what's old man Strick? I mean, what else has your brother been saying about me? Nothing I couldn't have deduced for myself, slacker. Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. A shoe? Now, now, what would I want with a... Huh? <gasps> Stay there! Sorry, Einstein. Well, took you long enough. 
Um, there's a lot of stairs. To return the shoe, I mean. I lost it ages ago. You can put it down next to the other one. Mm, much better. So neat and orderly. Nah, I suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now. No, I... All I've got is tea and candy. But... I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, nine out of ten people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Uh... Have a seat, Sonny. You kids! Put out those cigarettes! Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! Yes? Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! Huh. Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But... Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh... Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. Oh, when was it? Oh, yes, the day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> a speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. <laughs> Sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history? My Aunt Fanny! Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe things about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right where that disgusting videotape rental store squats today. So the video store building must have gone up after the speakeasy burned down. The following year, as I recall. What's with all these newspapers? This is my personal archive. I've got every issue of the Hill Valley Telegraph ever published. Get out. Every single issue? From 1871 to the present. If it happened in Hill Valley, you'll find it in my stacks. I guess somewhere in these stacks, there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down. Naturally. I probably wrote it myself. I was quite a reporter back in the day. Any idea what date that article came out? Well, obviously the day after the speakeasy burned down. Doing some stargazing? No, oh, I set my sights on <laughs> lower things. Is that? Tiff Tannen! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! Don't let me keep you from your business. You there! Don't even think about tossing that Kleenex on the ground! Mind if I take a look? Go ahead, dear.
rebuilt in February 1932. So the fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Don't look at me. I'm far too old for you. Don't touch those! My newspapers are in pristiculously organized. Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. Man, she keeps it hot in here. That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. And don't touch anything! Let's see. Ground broken on site of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. Soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley Police Station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob? What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let no! me... No! You've gotten my history out of order! Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Help! Police! I'M BEING ATTACKED BY HOOLIGANS! Marty! Where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? Uh, didn't I tell you? I, I got the lead in the school play. Uh, we're doing... Grapes of Wrath? Right. Oh, Steinbeck. Who are you playing? Um, uh... Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. You ready to go, Einstein? I've got to turn on the time circuits first. Time circuits? On. Flux capacitor? Uh, fluxy. Okay. If Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before, and get him out! I hope you know what you're doing, Doc.
Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? Young man? Excuse me, young man? Who? Uh, me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... You can mark me down as a supporter, the young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets, no doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? No, nah, not really. That's the spirit! Destroy them with indifference! If we refuse to patronize their establishments and glorify their wicked exploits, they'll soon be exposed for the pathetic wretches they are! May I get your name? Yeah, it's... Harry Callahan. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Callahan. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before! What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up! Doc, I gotta find Doc. Doc! <gasps> Marty! Doc! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, y you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Great Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse! Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. 
I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided, do you? Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great. I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You'll need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! Won't talking to yourself cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. Okay, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why don't you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. Together, you'll be unstoppable. McFly? Biff? Kid? Grandpa? That's Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? Well, what are you still doing here? Sorry, kid. I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh, now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway... I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Brown residence? Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse.
Watch those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm, uh, Harry Callahan. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. Naturally, H2K multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation value of the right? What am I missing here? Or do we take H's hand and put it in the line? Is H2K multiplied by the inverse of A might well be equal to A's expectation value, but only if it... Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the legal eagle act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Callahan, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Ah, uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing! Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong! Nah. I don't think so. Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh. Doc! Marty! Have you found my younger self yet? So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think! H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A... Uh... Good grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. What was H again? The Hamiltonian operator. Got it. Where have you been all this time? I missed you. I missed you too, Marty. But I thought it was important to let you live your own life for a while, free from the insanity of time travel. I gotta admit, it was nice to not have my family history blowing up in my face for a few months. Besides, I've been busy raising my own unpredictable teenagers. 
So how are Clara and the kids? They're fine, fine. Right now we're trying to decide where to send Jules and Vern to college. Clara prefers the 2020s, but I'm partial to the 1960s. We're planning on visiting you and Jennifer in 2011 soon. Me and Jennifer? In 2011? Oh, forget I said anything. Where'd the DeLorean come from? The last time I saw it had been smashed to pieces by a train. It's a fantastic story. Do you remember when the DeLorean got struck by lightning in 1955? Yeah. Unbeknownst to either of us, the lightning produced a temporal duplicate of the time machine, one that was tossed 70 years into the future. What? I found out about it during a trip to 2025 and recovered it just in time to stop Griff Tannen from vandalizing the time stream. Heavy. So that DeLorean... It's for all intents and purposes the exact same machine as the original. Plus or minus little bells and whistles I've added over the years, of course. So, what were you doing in 1931 anyway? Oh, nothing terribly exciting. Indulging in a little personal nostalgia, picking up a few rare out-of-print books to surprise Clara on her birthday, solving a historical mystery or two. The usual. The usual? You lead a pretty unusual life, Doc. It's an unusual universe, Marty. I hate to tell you, Doc, but your last time departed display is on the fritz. It is? So how did you find me? I found one of Edna Strickland's shoes in the DeLorean. How did one of her shoes get in the DeLorean? Einstein took it from her. He did? How strange. Einie almost never attacks people. Not without a good reason, anyway. How'd you wind up in jail in 1931, anyway? During my trip to the past, I decided to look into one of Hill Valley's unsolved mysteries. The fire at the speakeasy. Exactly. I thought I was safely hidden across the street. But when the fire started, there was a tremendous explosion, and I was knocked unconscious by a stray brick. When I woke up, I was here in jail, charged with arson. That's horrible. I know. Worse yet, I still don't know who started the fire. Guess who I bumped into at the soup kitchen? My grandfather. No! Oh! Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good! I wish I could, though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kit Tannen's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. What's the story with this kid Tannen jerk anyway? Biff's father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about Wait, it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. No kidding. What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes, now I remember. Ask Edna, the etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. That would explain a lot. I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986, after we save me from a grisly death in 1931. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan! Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. 
What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the... Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott! If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A. <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket-powered drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill? Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office! I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Now that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. It's part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? I've got a subpoena my grandpa. <gasps> it's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. What the hell, Matches? You, you got Kiwi all over my socks! Sorry, boss. Get out of here! How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. And he's very busy today. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! What'd you do? Oh. <clears throat> Give me that hat, you lousy crook! Emmett! Emmett! Nobody makes a monkey out of Kid Tannen! Hey! Fix me up!
Where do you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out! Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Callahan. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. What's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh? Where? The Brown Residence. You mean Judge Brown's place? Yeah, I happen to be good friends with his son Emmett, and he's told me the judge would love to lend his place out for, you know, good causes like yours. Really? Why, that's the most generous, public-spirited offer I've received in a month of Sundays. Please, tell your friend Emmett we accept. The meeting isn't due to start for a little while, so that'll give our people some time to set up. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit! Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls. Or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. Hey, I can help you deliver soup. I don't need a lot of time to charities. Oh? Which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, yes. The Italians do so many good works. If you'll just fix it so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold your horses, let's not get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But, if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. As a matter of fact, I do know a local charity that's running low on soup. Oh? Who? Never mind, I'm wrong. The pool hall isn't a charity. Certainly not. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good. Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. I got a book. Oh? Where? A cue ball. What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of, uh, soup. Soup soup? Well, uh, this is the regular soup, and this is the special soup. 
Right. Special. Hey, what are you doing? I'm spicing up the soup. It's my secret recipe. Listen, this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right. Just try the soup. Well? Ah, I can see why you want to keep this a secret. Excuse me. You talking to me? So this place used to be a soup kitchen. What do you mean, used to be? <clears throat> Despite recent changes in ownership, this joint is still available for the purposes of distributing food to the needy and the not-so-well-to-do. And no other purposes whatsoever. Right. What's a tough guy like Kid Tannen doing running a soup kitchen? Mr. Tannen purchased the soup kitchen from the Sisters of Mercy in an effort to repair his reputation as a respectable community figure after his fine name was besmirched by the malignant and malicious, malicious the actions of the misguided vandals that, that, that done burned down his place of business. It's speakeasy. I cannot confirm nor deny any claims of so-called illegal bootlegging at the... the... <laughs> Just eat your damn soup, pipsqueak. Mind if I look around a bit? No. Listen up for a second. Any ideas about how to get the hooch? Hooch? The alcohol, Emmett. Ah, one might come to the conclusion that the hooch is being hidden in some of those barrels. You're probably right, but which ones? Now, if I could get my hands on some of those barrels, I could weigh them and compare their specific gravity. Specific gravity? Come on, Emmett. Kids goons aren't going to let us do an experiment on their barrels. Oh, I suppose you're right. We'll just have to ask the guy behind the counter. What? Ask him if any of his barrels are filled with illegal moonshine? Get real here. Well, I imagined a modicum of subtlety would be used. Subtlety. Right. Obviously, this kitchen isn't the speakeasy. Indeed. This must be some sort of front meant to cleverly and legally obfuscate the existence of a hidden establishment of ill repute. Perhaps in the basement. Right, that might explain the elevator. We'll score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating. Those who once ate delicacies are destitute in the street. Cheery. Uh, excuse me. Yeah? Can I have a bowl of soup? We're a soup kitchen. What do you think? Uh, what kind of soup is this? It, it tastes like... scroll a ribolita? I was gonna say weak old cabbage. Everyone's a critic. Look, all I got to work with is this two-bit soup in a barrel and spice rack that hadn't been restocked since the Coolidge administration. What do you think I should do to perk this slop up? Let's see. Have you tried... Salt? Salt? What, do you think it's too bland? Too mild? 
I didn't put too much pepper in it, did I? I just think it could use a little more salt. No accounting for taste these days. There's no way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. Emmett. Yes? Emmett, I can't get into the door over there. Those tables are jamming it shut. The door? So your plan is to just waltz in there and take a barrel of alcohol? Uh, no. Of course not. That would be stupid, right? I'll say. Still, I'd like to get that door open. I can't do anything from out here. Well, it's a simple matter of physics. A lever, some sort of stop. Let me see what I can come up with. Eureka! Pretty neat, Doc. <laughs> nope. I'm, I'm still not getting through here. But at least those tables are propped up now. Okay, I've got some more ideas about your soup. Do tell. Let's see. Have you tried... Salt? We already did salt, remember? Oh, right. It could use a bit more, though. Miss Strickland, come for some more soup? Come now, Mr. Donnelly. You know I wouldn't set one foot in this mockery of all that is good and decent if the poor of Hill Valley weren't so dependent on Mr. Tennant's overblown show of generosity. Was that a yes? Just give me the soup before I gag on the hypocrisy. I'll tell the boss you said hello. I'll just bet you will. And they picked up the barrel of hooch. Now all I have to do is to get it from her somehow.
Hey, honey. Come here for a sec, boy. Hey, boy. Can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? Where is he going? Only one way to find out. Deja vu. Yeah? Who is it? It's McFly! Shh, I know! Hey, Arthur. Can you come down a minute? Do I know you? We've got something for you. It's a sub a subscription to the Accountant Weekly. He won't come out if he knows why we're really here. No, oh, right. <laughs> I'm not interested. And besides, the boss won't let me leave the room. Sorry, some other time. Need any help? Um, never mind. Well, well, look who's back! They say rats always return to the scene of the sinking ship. Uh, get him, Matches! You son of a bitch! What do you think you're doing up there, you scrawny little runt? Get down here right now! Don't make me angry, schmucko! Get down here and face the music! You can't get away that easy. Nobody puts one over on Kid Tannen and lives to tell about it! You're dead meat, twerp! Better start composing your epitaph now, cause I'm gonna carve it into your face! In bullets! I don't want to record them right here. now. You're only making it worse for yourself! Einstein! Help! Lay off! Get away from me, you crazy mutt! Go, go away, dog! We're busy here! Go on, scram! Hey! Where'd he go? You let him get away, idiot!
What now? Kid. Arthur McFly? Yeah? Got something for you. Thanks. A subpoena? Ordering you to appear in court and provide evidence in the investigation into- Kid Tannen? Take it back! You can't get rid of it, Mr. McFly, or at the earliest possible time. Failure to do so could lead to a warrant for your arrest. Arrest? But kid will kill me. Stupid, stupid Artie. Holy cats, what am I gonna do? I suggest you avail yourself to the protection of the court. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Oh, I hate doing stuff like that. But I won't have to much longer. No? Once we get that 190 proof alcohol and build my rocket drill, my future will be set and I'll be able to quit this crummy job. Oh, right. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Callahan. I'm afraid I haven't much time. The meeting of the Stay Sober Society is due to begin very soon. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit for my soup cycle? The Stay Sober Society. That's right. They'll soon be gathering at the Brown Estate, and we haven't provided refreshments. I can't get over the generosity of your friend Emmett, volunteering his father's house for our meeting. Huh? Uh, wait there! Harry! What in the name of Thomas Alva Edison do you think you're doing? Don't you get it? You need alcohol to run your drill, right? Those bootleggers at the soup kitchen won't let us get our hands on any of their hooch, but we can get Miss Strickland to pick it up for us and deliver it right to your door. No! Out of the question! Why? I can't just let strangers invade my parents' house! What do we know about these people? They're sober. It says so right in the name. Well, okay, but... A pop needs his peace and quiet at the end of the day. This meeting is sure to be too noisy for him. What's wrong with a little noise? It'll be like a party. My pop is not the partying type. They'll be quiet. You'll be quiet, right? Oh, yes! I play my tambourine very softly. You hear that? Yes, but... But what? But it's still impossible. But I promised Miss Strickland. It means so much to her. The answer is still no. Think of the Stay Sober Society. What'll happen to them? They can all fall off the wagon for all I care. Okay, forget the whole thing. We don't have to test your rocket power drill tonight. We don't? No, I'll take the train back to Washington and I'll tell the folks at the office to give the patent to Dr. McCoy. Wait! You will instruct the members of the Society to wipe their feet before they come inside. Then you are, Emmett Brown. I thought as much. You have such a righteous face. Edna Strickland, I don't know how to thank you for your generosity. Oh, um, uh, pleased to meet you. The feeling is mutual. I've got a bad feeling about this. Uh, you worry too much, Emmett. But well, we've served the subpoena and gotten a barrel of booze delivered to your house. Looks like we're off to your lab to build your rocket drill. 
Ah, uh, you do have a lab, right? What kind of future patent holder would I be without a lab? Come on! Doc! I'm off to get the rocket drill. Good! <gasps> Come on, let's go! Time waits for no man! Are you sure this is gonna work, Emmett? Don't let the ramshackle nature of my laboratory fool you. If all goes according to plan, we'll soon be in possession of the most powerful rocket fuel known to man! That's great! Uh, how? Well, it's very simple. This crankshaft induces a powerful direct current into the electrolysis chamber, producing hydrogen which must be periodically released into the primary distillation barrel! While tending to the hydrogen, we'll also need to regularly sprinkle these shredded protein flakes into this aquarium of tuber bacteria to generate the necessary nitrogen to catalyze the reaction! Cool. Oh, hot! Extremely hot! The temperature of the reaction must be kept at a steady temperature of 623 degrees Kelvin by carefully pumping these bellows! Any questions? Uh... Hey, Matt? Why is there a brace of drunkards gathering on our lawn? Sweet fancy Moses, it's my father! So? So, he doesn't know I'm engaging in acts of scientific exploration in here. He thinks this is where I go to pour through my law books. Oh. You tend to the reaction, I'll try to get rid of him! Tend to the... what? Can't we just start over after he's gone? It's too late! The reaction's already started! Don't worry, I'll try to help you where I can. But... Emmett! Uh, coming, father! Father! Don't you father me, child! This isn't food for thought, Pop. It's gruel! Listen to the words I'm emphasizing. Don't you turn your back on me! Oh, maybe your burning passion, Father, but it is not mine! Can't you see this is eating me up inside? What did you do? Emmett, who are you talking to in there? Uh, no one, father. This may come as a shock to you, Pop, but not everyone wants to be a lawyer. You know who invented fire, Pop? I don't know either, but you can be damn sure it wasn't a lawyer. Go feed the ducks, father. Excellent. Now twist the valve there. Great. We're about a quarter of the way home. Damn it! Get back here! Oops. <laughs> You're going to find out. Maybe I should just get struck by lightning. Would that make you happy? All room full of lawyers trapped in a burning building. A good start! I don't know what's eating you, Father, but I wish it would go on a diet. Pressuring me to be something I'm not! My fault if I don't get a spark out of laws and statutes? My blood pressure. Just pay attention to what I say. Damn it! I'm not true with you yet! I'm... You're going to find out.
it. I'm not just another one of your staffers who spins around you like a top. I hope someday you have children. No idea what kind of pressure I'm under. You know, is it my fault if I don't get a spark out of laws and statutes? Should I honor your wishes? You treat me like common bacteria. Lawyers are nothing but a bunch of hot air. There, I said it. I thought you were a scientist! Damn it! Stop being such a crank! Why won't you release me from your unattainable expectations? You don't get to control my life just because you fed and clothed me for 17 years. Lawyers are nothing but overblown bags of gas! Stop getting so hot under the collar, Pop! Ah, halfway there! Damn it! Keep up the good work! I'm not just another one of your staffers who spins around you like a top. What will it take to light a fire under your unappreciative hindquarters? Don't touch anything until I tell you to. Damn it! I know it's eating you, Father, but I wish you would go on a diet. You keep bellowing like that! My Galileo's rotations. Do you ever listen to yourself? Your ancestors are spinning in their graves right now. If it weren't for scientists, men like you would still be divining the future with sheep's bladders and goat gizzards. This may come as a shock to you, Pop, but not everyone wants to be a lawyer. Father, why don't you ever listen to me? Listen to the words I'm emphasizing. Damn it! I strongly object to the current of this conversation, Father. Your mother and I are shocked at your behavior, young man. You really want to vent our dirty laundry in public like this? There is a flame inside me that cannot be quelled by your legalistic gobbledygook, Father. Have a release valve on your mouth somewhere? Pressure? You're a child. You don't know anything about pressure. Maybe I should just get struck by lightning. Would that make you happy? Burn your bridges so cavalierly, my son. Hotter you get, the more I know I'm right. Some bronze have been officers of the court since God's heavenly spark first gave rise to man, Emmett. Can't you see this is eating me up inside? You know who invented fire pop? I don't know either, but you can be damn sure it wasn't a lawyer. If it weren't for scientists, men like you would still be divining the future with sheep's bladders and goat gizzards. Are you trying to spin this argument around to my failings? Just pay attention to what I say. Damn it! Do I get a turn to talk, or is this going to be another monologue? Why don't you go feed the ducks, Father? What are they feeding you in that school of yours? You look like a skeleton. 
one great thing ever generated by a lawyer. Calm down, calm down. Stop getting so hot under the collar, Pop. You keep bellowing like that. This isn't food for thought, Pop. It's gruel. What will it take to light a fire under your unappreciative hindquarters? If you don't like my performance at the courthouse, then fire me. Your ancestors are spinning in the... Almost there. Emmett! Uh, coming, Father! This may come as a shock to you, Pop, but not everyone wants to be a lawyer. A room full of lawyers trapped in a burning building? A good start! Why won't you release me from your unattainable expectations? Just another one of your staffers who spins around you like a top. Don't you have a release valve on your mouth somewhere? There is a flame inside me that cannot be quelled by your legalistic gobbledygook father. Pressuring me to be something I'm not. Not being such a crank. Lawyers are nothing but overblown bags of gas. What use is a microorganism for law? Lawyers are nothing but a bunch of hot air. There, I said it. Uh, I'm afraid we'll have to take this up later, Pop. My soup's about to boil over. What? This isn't over, young man. Whew. Are you okay? You and your dad sounded... It was an argument we should have had a long time ago. We... Oh. Oh. What? Eureka! Now all we gotta do is fuel up the old rocket power drill and you and, and I can- I can take it and go. But don't you want to test it first? No time. The, uh, the, the last train for D.C. leaves in just a few minutes. All right. You've got to get this baby to the U.S. Patent Office. Uh, exactly. So tell me, Harry, when can I expect to hear back from the Patent Office? Oh, in about, I'd say... I, I can't. Huh? Emmett, I'm not from the patent office. I don't understand. I, I, I lied to you, but I, I didn't want to. It was just, it was the only way I can get you to trust me. See, there's somebody who's in big trouble. Uh, someone very important to me, to, to both of us. Uh, I can't tell you who, but I need to save him tonight. And, and I need your invention to do it. I'll get it back to you, I promise. And, Emmett... You're gonna be a great inventor. Wait! Keep the throttle at about eight. Okay, Doc, I got the drill. Now let's get you out of here. Come on, start. Harry! You're too late. Too late? But Doc's not supposed to be... They're moving him to another facility for safekeeping! Oh! I better go get a quote from the police chief! Paddy wagon intercepted. Suspect slain. And they're still after him. But how am 
I gonna rescue him now? Hmm, at least the rocket part came out of this in one piece. I'm coming, Doc. Doc, I've got to get you out of here. What's that? I said you're still in danger. Never mind, never mind. Get me out of here and we'll talk later. What's he doing here? Oh good, the window shut. They won't budge! Can't 
Tannen's driving the truck. Kid Tannen? That explains a lot. I need a distraction. Leave it to me. Hey, hey driver. You're driving too fast. Watch how you take those curves. What are you trying to do? Kill me? Not, Not quick enough. Distract him again? No problem! Hey! Hey, driver! I demand to know where you're taking me! And how long is it gonna be till we get Get there! And I, want to... I object to your tone of voice! And I find this seat distinctly uncomfortable! Do you have a pillow I can sit on? Hey! I'm talking to you, driver! Don't ignore me! You! Ah! Ah! Thanks, Doc. I guess that's why they call you the streak. How did you know that? I have my sources. Stand back, Doc. What sorts of bizarre repercussions my younger self's invention of a flying bicycle will have on the timeline? Did you know that would happen? I had a suspicion. I never could keep those rockets from exploding. So, what do we do now? Now we get back to 1986 before our interactions with the past inevitably cascade into a calamitous future. Where'd you leave Einstein? Uh, Doc? He's not in the pound, is he? No, but I think we've got bigger problems right now. Great Scott! I don't know. We'll have to be careful not to run into ourselves. Hey, fellas. All right, McFly. Let's go see the boss. History says Tanner will be arrested by a rookie cop by the name of Danny Parker. I fear that nothing will save Hill Valley from descending into the fires of chaos and corruption. Nothing is over until Kid Tannen says it's over. <laughs> 